For this video, I'll show you how to create a theme provider web component that you can wrap your entire app or website content with containing details that changes how your website looks. Support the channel by liking or commenting on this video. Subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. Now, let's take a look. I have here a blank project which I use Vite to generate. It is a vanilla TypeScript project. You are free to start with any blank project you want to do this. First thing I'll do is install KUKO, which is a library that simplifies how you create and work with web components, which lets you create components you can use with any project type, React, Angular, Vue, Svelte, etc. The index.html file is pretty simple. I only import a TypeScript and CSS file for now. The app CSS simply set HTML and body tags to 100% width and height. And our theme provided TypeScript file is where all the magic will happen. Before we do anything, let's start from the user perspective first, so you understand what I want to accomplish here. I want to be able to have a theme provider tag, which I can place in my page that I can wrap my entire website content with. The theme provider tag should be able to receive a path with source attribute of where my theme file is. I want to also provide a mode of my theme, for example, dark mode of my BFS theme, this can be anything. Maybe I have a grayscale, print, or colorblind specific mode of my theme, which I can toggle on demand. I want to also provide a default mode, just in case such mode does not exist for the theme. On a theme file side, first I want to specify the modes at the top level, and that will be the only requirement for the theme files. What you put inside is totally up to you and requirements of your project. For mine, I have a dark and light modes, which for this example will only contain colors for foreground and background at five levels. Again, how you name things and what goes inside is up to you. My light mode is just the inverse of my dark mode color values. Now that we know how the user experience will be, let's work backwards to the implementation. Now back to the theme provider TypeScript file, I import context provider component from Kuko create my theme provider class that extends it and proceed to register my component. Kuko content provider component is a powerful component type which allows you to do various things we will see in a second. First, I want to handle those three attributes I just told you about, source, mode, and default mode. This will be observed attributes so our theme provider updates if their attribute value change. I'll proceed by setting few properties. Mode will be empty by default, and I'll have a private theme to hold the fetch result and a current theme object, which will hold the theme in its current mode. Any public property value, either shallow or deep change will trigger an update in the content of our component. And I don't want the API fetch result to do that. That's why it is private. Now, when the component mounts, AKA attached to the document DOM, I will grab the source attribute and call fetch with it. Then I'll parse the body as JSON and use the JSON to set the theme private property and use mode to grab the current theme. Now I want to also react to when the mode value changes. So on update, I'll check if the property that changed was mode and use it to update the current theme. What I actually want is to use the flatten theme object values into CSS values to set on the root. So I'll create a method to handle that, which when there is a current theme, I'll create a ify function, aka immediately invoked function expression called flatten, which takes an object, initially the theme object, and a optional prefix, initially an empty string. Inside, first I'll get the keys of the object, then reduce it since it will be an array. Check my video on the reduce array method for more details. But essentially, first thing I'll check if there is a prefix and attach a dash to it since CSS values are split into dash separated names. Then I'll detect if the key in that object has an object value and object assigned the current accumulator value with a flattened call for that object result, concatenating the current pre value with the key. This pretty much means that flatten object is a recursive function, aka a function that calls itself. Check my video on recursions for more details as well. If the key value is not an object, it is because it reached the deep value. So we will just use the pre value plus the key to set that value in the accumulated object. What this will pretty much do is flatten our object like so. 
However, this is not CSS variables yet. So I'll grab the result here as flattened pink variable and go over the keys of this object to concat the str string dash dash plus the key column and the value with a new line at the end. Then we will return this str string. With that, we need to use this to set the CSS root variables. So I'll define a style sheet for this component, which I'll set the root values by calling our get theme CSS vars function inside of square brackets, which is a specific Quico data binding syntax for CSS. This pretty much means that whenever there is a change in our component, a new CSS variables will be generated with our theme values. Let's look at the result by first running our application with npm run local and our page looks super plain with our simple content. If we inspect the page and select the theme provider tag, we can see here on the right, our generated CSS variables according to our theme. If we look inside our head tag, we will see the first special power of, of Kuko context provider component, which is it will set the style inside our head as we defined it. To handle changing theme on demand, I'll create a change theme mode inside our theme provider class, which simply takes a new value for mode and updates it. Now, inside our index.html file, we can try a second power of context provider component, which is data binding directly in the HTML file. Here, I added a button with a theme and inside curly braces for data binding, I'm accessing the, the mode property value, which exists inside the theme provider class. I will also add an on click event attribute and inside I'll call the change theme provider method that I just created with the value which I first check if the current mode is dark and change it to light and vice versa. By the way, Kuko will remove the inline event handler attributes before rendering the content. If we check this in action, you can see our new button saying that the theme is dark. And with the inspector open, when I click it, you can see our style in the head changing accordingly. Nothing is happening to our content style because we are not actually using these variables yet. So back to our app CSS file, I'll set some style for the body with zero padding and margin. And most importantly, we'll use the colors foreground 100 variable for the text and anchor text, colors background 100 for background of the page. If we check our page, we see the result right away. And if I click our button, we see changing looks according to the theme mode. Cool, right? Check Kukwa website to learn more about building web components the easiest way. Let me know what you think in the comments or like this video to support the channel. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on anything. Once again, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.